Hello, this is Mr. Angus Wangus back to make another vid of my free energy quest. <laughs> but um, I've been working at it a little bit every day still. I haven't been pumping out the vids like I was. Um, it seems lately once a week, but um, I'm still wacko right into it exploring this. But have a vid, a couple things to say. Uh, basically, I'm just going to get it going. Uh, same input, same resistors. I have a couple meters on, and I'm gonna turn her on. Ooh, let's get some meters on. Ah, I knew I was forgetting something. AC volts, amps. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a spin. Let's make sure it's off. Give her a whirl. Get her up to speed. Okay, so basically, um, I have a coil set on there. This is my 25 gauge set. It's not a U-core, it's just uh, two, well, four pieces of rebar. And I don't even want to say how much they weigh because I don't remember. I just weighed them too. Anyways, um, I'm just gonna show the effect where I'm at. Uh, still at about 87% with a good output. I have the output put um, hooked up to my little motor and wheel setup and it's missing two positions of magnets because I'm using them for something else but I'm going to explain that. Um, I'm still testing cores, uh, testing the, the difference in the wire gauge and the effect given. Um, now the output is hard to use and others out there are testing uh, the same underlying principle and um, uh, when they're shorted you get the full effect and it's beautiful but um, when you put any sort of resistance or load on it uh, you don't get the full effect so this is what we're working at right now and learning some cool things about cores and I have something to talk about Ed's design uh, as well he a um, vi few videos ago I mentioned his we all had a homopolar aspect. That's what this little contraption is back here, testing the homopolar system. Um, and I have an idea about that, but I uh, just want to show basically the what's going on. We have 369. RPMs right at 370. All right, 370. So basically, I'm going to give this just a little nudge. I'm going to flip the switch. Our voltage dropped. I forgot to show that. I think it was about 40 volts. It was 0 .0, 0 0.07 amps or 70 milliamps going through from the coils to the wheel. Now <laughs> it's Definitely not flying, right? But um, it's a start, and um, that's about as fast as it goes. But the input has dropped just like before, and we're speeding up, right? Just like before. Now again, the uh, the output from these coils is is but has is weird because anytime you put a load on it, um, it you don't get the full effect now I'm I'm getting a good effect here because the I don't know how many volts it was it must have around, been around 35 but this little motor is rated at uh, 30 30 volts right so it takes that voltage, right? It, dep it depends on your load. It takes all of the amperage. I hooked this am ammeter up just straight up to the uh, rectifier, and this, this is what I get. So it's sucking all the current. It's leaving about three volts. Uh, not getting the entire full effect, but it's sped up. And we're at that 87% mark, right? Still, 
but I'm still testing on the cores and things like that. And we do have movement. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, the main reason I wanted to make the video is to talk about the output and how anytime you put a load on it, you don't get the full effect like when you short it. If I would have shorted those wires right there, uh, the wheel would have picked up even more. It, it would have uh, uh, had a higher speed. <clears throat> so I was thinking about it. And <laughs> uh, like we said before, Ed's wheel has a, a homopolar aspect to it and um, pointed that out in a previous video, which was a redo from a, a, over a year ago, I think. But anyways, I was thinking that we could use the output from these coils, right, the bucking coils, and put them, this would be AC coming out, and put it through a full wave bridge rectifier, make it DC, and then have a homopolar motor driving the wheel, right? Because a homopolar, I was thinking, now I've made these little homopolar motors in the past, and um, anyways, <laughs> I was about to go on a tangent story, but I'll save you that. Um, but this is a dead short, and I've been playing with this, uh, this little setup, which <laughs> isn't ideal, but it's been fun to play with. Um, I can get it going pretty quick. But anyways, um, I was thinking like, this would be a good motor uh, to drive it with. And, and Ed's wheel has the homopolar aspect to it, which I've pointed out before. And I think I'm seeing now that we take this output here and basically dead short it out through this homopolar. You touch the axle and the conductive disc in the middle of the magnet. That's how a homopolar works. This is a magnet north-south. That's the null center point. Contact there, contact the shaft with some current, a DC current, and it spins, right? Um, but that would be a dead short, and you would get the full effect from the coils um, driving that system. And perhaps with enough coil sets, with the full effect, um, now mind you, with it shorted and the, the right wire and cores, I'm able to get this up to 415 RPMs of 445, right? So, and, and honestly, even though there's a little bit of a discrepancy in the RPMs like that, um, the input is the same as if there's nothing on the wheel. So, but anyways, um, with that system, with it dead shorted out, getting the full effect on the wheel, a good current, right, driving at homopolar. That was my next thought. And this is what I've been, <clears throat> uh, this is, I've been playing with that little setup for uh, a day now or two. But anyways, um, even with this system going into this motor, uh, if I could keep the output of, you know, I make more coil sets uh, at around 30 volts coming out of there and parallel the outputs up, pump them into that motor um, to drive the wheel. And now my very original video, I had three coil sets with U's, uh, uh, U-cores, which is very attracted to the magnets and, and puts a drag on the wheel just from attraction. With this little setup, I had three U's on there. And it was only taking about five or six watts, I want to say, uh, of energy to do that. But, um, yeah, so it should be interesting. And without the U, without that attraction, still getting energy um, and working all these things in. Now, I'm still testing cores. I just went and bought um, some tubing and I bought some other, other things. I just tested those uh, laminated cores. Those are pieces of transformer iron. And, uh, wow, I mean, <laughs> you get some good current, but... It totally ruins the effect. And I have a couple other pieces of uh, steel there I'm going to try. Tonight, this is what I'm doing. Oh, and I made a couple other coils, just to mention. Uh, these are about 18, 20 gauge. I took the 16 gauge off there and wound those on. Give me about 10 volts at uh, 600 milliamps, or 0.6 amps, which is cool. And it, uh, th these coils light up a bulb bright. But again, I don't get the full effect. 
Um, and actually the uh, lower voltage, I thought something closer to 12 volts would work better. But to be honest, um, this gives better amperage, a way better current um, at a lower voltage. And I thought it would be more usable. And to be honest, it's not. And I sort of see that it's almost less usable. But again, I'm going to have to uh, do more with that. Mainly wanted to show what I'm doing here. And uh, mainly wanted to talk about this idea with uh, driving it with the homopolar motor because it's a dead short and it would utilize the um, the output fully and get the full effect um, as if there's no iron next to the wheel and with the right number of coil sets around there um, and the right current going to that system you know this could drive itself I'm still thinking the same things um, as previous you know it's just taking long to um, figure all this out but um, just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, tell me what you think. Um, hello to everybody out there, all my friends and subs. and Everybody's great. and love talking to everyone around the world. <laughs> it's uh, pretty crazy. But awesome. The internet's awesome. There you go. I won't blab anymore. Um, there's a bit of a demonstration. The idea is where I'm going. Uh, what I'm working on. Still working on it. Now I have a busy week coming up again. And, um, but I'm still going to be doing this when I can, but just wanted to keep you updated. There you go. Oh, I forgot. I have a, a redneck tip of the day just to close things out here. <laughs> if you're ever in need, I found myself in need of a Allen wrench, right? And I was taking the end of a motor off. Uh, this was a couple weeks ago and I didn't have the Allen key for it. So what I did was I took the fork and bent the tines down except for one <clears throat> and you snip just a little bit off at a time like a little bit, a couple millimeters at a time with your uh, side cutters <clears throat> until you get to the, and then you try it in there until it fits and then when it fits you got yourself an Allen, Allen wrench you know, Allen key, right? Redneck style so there you go. There's your tip of the redneck tip of the day. <laughs> and uh, tell me what you think about uh, shorting it, dead shorting it out, and using a homopolar motor to drive it. Uh, because Ed's wheel had a homopolar aspect to it. Uh, we, I talked about that before. Anyways, there you go. And uh, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm doing. And I'll talk to you later. See you.